As we all know, Netflix giveth and Netflix taketh away. And lo and behold, it's taking away quite a few really great flicks during March 2020. It can be difficult to keep track of all the comings and goings on Netflix, but fortunately for you, we're on top of it. Most of Marvel Studios' releases have already boogied off of Netflix and onto their new home on rival streamer Disney+, and the stragglers won't be around for long. As of now, you can still catch Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Black Panther on Netflix. But if you're keen to relive King T'Challa's awesome 2018 solo adventure, you'd better do it pretty soon. Time's running out, so don't freeze. I never freeze. Star Chadwick Boseman gives a powerful, regal performance. His co-stars Denai Gurira and Letitia Wright deliver star-making turns, and Michael B. Jordan brings to life one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's most complex villains to date. Black Panther is one of Mighty Marvel's greatest films, and that is really saying something. Stream it on Netflix until March 3rd. The franchise may have flagged a bit with last year's soft reboot, Men in Black International, but the first three films in the MIB series, the ones which benefited from the sure direction of Barry Sonnenfeld and the otherworldly comedic chemistry of stars Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, are about as good as sci-fi comedies get. The first two of those, 1997's Men in Black and 2002's Men in Black 2, are available for streaming on Netflix, but not for long. If you haven't caught either of these flicks for a while, it will amaze you to be reminded of just how fun and funny they are, especially the first one. Smith's ever-inflating charisma and star power is on full display. Jones is as cool as ever, and supporting players such as Linda Florentino, the late Rip Torn, Lara Flynn Boyle, and Johnny Knoxville round out the supporting casts of Men in Black and Men in Black 2. Watch them again on Netflix until March 14th. Coraline is an innovative animated film which everyone assumes was directed by Tim Burton, but was actually the work of Henry Selick, one of Burton's longtime associates and director of the holiday classic The Nightmare Before Christmas. Based on a novel by master of dark fantasy Neil Gaiman, the mind behind the iconic comic book series The Sandman, Coraline goes to some very unusual places, not the least of which is the alternate dimension visited by its child protagonist. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes if you want to stay here. So sharp you won't feel a thing. Ow! Basically, it's a stunning visual and narrative achievement, one which you'll want to catch again before its time on Netflix is up. And if you've never seen it, you'll probably want to get on that. Coraline is available to stream until March 15th. David Fincher's 2007 masterpiece Zodiac is several cuts above your average true crime thriller, meticulously researched, flawlessly written, and featuring a crackerjack cast made up largely of, coincidentally, future MCU alumni. The movie provides an exhaustive examination of the Zodiac murders, perhaps the most notorious unsolved serial killings in American history. Like the real-life case, it's agonizingly suggestive without providing answers. Also like the case, it can at times slow to a crawl before catching the viewer totally off guard with shocking, punishing bursts of violence. David Fincher's direction has never been sharper or more deliberate. Stream Zodiac on Netflix until March 19th. The films of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy are some of the finest examples of the superhero genre, and they've blazed more trails than you might remember. Before 2005's Batman Begins, the word reboot was used solely to describe the process of restarting a computer. Nolan's complete revamping of Batman for the big screen was gritty, grounded, and inspired. Even if it took audiences forever to get their heads around the fact that it was not a sequel to the Tim Burton or Joel Schumacher Batman movies. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Bruce? The film's legacy would have been impressive enough on its own, but then came 2008's The Dark Knight which simply shattered everyone's notions of what a comic book film could be. Sadly, all good things, as they say, must come to an end. Gotham's protector won't be sticking around for much longer. Batman Begins and The Dark Knight will be available to stream until March 30th. Spectacle movies don't get much more spectacular than Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, and the second and third films, The Two Towers and Return of the King, are revered by fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's classic fantasy novels. Sure, Return of the King ends about six different times, but fans didn't mind. Heck, the movie was so good that they probably would have been fine with two or three more fake-out endings. 
Mind-blowingly staged and perfectly cast, the Lord of the Rings flicks set a standard for big-budget fantasy that no movie without Harry Potter in the title has even come close to approaching. Unfortunately, the end is nigh. You best feast your eyes on the final two films in the greatest fantasy series of all time before it's too late. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King will be departing Netflix on March 30th. Its five sequels have provided somewhat diminishing returns, but it's hard to overstate what a revelation paranormal activity was when it hit screens in 2007. Its inspired tweak to the conventions of the found footage genre, all of the action takes place on cameras, which a young couple set out throughout their home in an attempt to record, well, the paranormal activity plaguing the joint, allowed it to be made on a shoestring budget. This, A, in no way kept it from being the scariest film of its year, and B, made its $193 million worldwide box office total even more impressive than if the film hadn't been made for the cost of a pretty nice used car. Footsteps in, there's no footsteps out. Oh, God. Director Oren Pelly masterfully ratchets up the tension during the film's scant 85 minute runtime, and then unknown stars Katie Featherston and Mika Sloat turn in realistic performances that make the frequent scares land that much harder. With an excruciating third act and a final shot guaranteed to separate you from your skin, Paranormal Activity is one of the very best found footage flicks ever made. Stream it on Netflix until March 30th. As a director, Quentin Tarantino is every bit as skilled as he is wildly unrestrained, and we love him for both of those qualities. Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2 are very much two halves of one big movie, and it is part kung fu flick, part revenge movie, and all Tarantino. Uma Thurman stars as Beatrix Kiddo, aka The Bride, a master assassin and once a key member of the feared Deadly Viper assassination squad. She is brutalized and left for dead on her wedding day by her former cohorts, including their leader, Bill, who responds to her plea to spare her life and the life of their unborn child by shooting her in the head. Over the course of the two movies, she exacts her revenge on the squad's members without mercy, eventually fulfilling the flick's titles by way of the five-point palm exploding heart technique. You're a terrific person. You're my favorite person. But every once in a while, you can be a real the Kill Bill flicks are pure, distilled Tarantino, which is to say that they are uber-cinematic, super-stylized, unbelievably violent fun. They are two of the straight-up craziest movies you will ever see, and you've only got so much time left to see them on Netflix. Kill Bill Vol. 1 and Kill Bill Vol. 2 will be leaving the streamer on March 30th. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.